Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Boat Dealer Profits podcast, where I'm committed to helping you sell more boats, make more money, and have more fun. Um, today, we've got, a, we've got an awesome guest for you, uh, Melanie Clement from Lakeshore Sports uh, down in Texas. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read her bio real quick, and, um, and then we'll, we'll jump in and, and start getting into her, her boating story, as well as some of her experience with, um, with working with me and, and her hands-on experience as a, a dealership uh, general manager. So Melanie Clement is the general manager of Lakeshore Sport um, in, uh, in Texas, where she's worked for over 20 years. She grew up as a tournament water skier, uh, did some show skiing, and then ran a ski school before joining Lakeshore Sport. Uh, she's also a client of Boat Dealer Profits, and, and one of my favorites uh, because of her ability to implement even when she's got just a, a ton going on, um, and she does have a ton going on, that's for sure. And uh, she has the – Melanie has the honor of being one of the fastest to earn a boat sale um, from one of the splash strategies, um, you know, not just taking the deposit, but actually selling and delivering a boat within the first three weeks of the program. So uh, that that's a record for us so far, so that that's awesome. So, Melanie, thanks for uh, joining me here on the podcast. Um, I, I look forward to, to hearing your perspective on, on one, working with us, and just sharing some of the ideas and concepts that um, that you feel uh, kind of resonated with you that um, that uh, would be valuable. And um, and I want to start by asking you because uh, I haven't I haven't really talked as much as you and I have talked on the uh, phone and conferences. Um, tell me a little bit about your your water skiing uh, career. Well, I uh, grew up water skiing, and then just luckily, my grandparents lived on the lake where the coach for the American water ski team lived and trained his kids, so that's how we got exposed, and then just started mostly in college at uh, the collegiate level, did the tournament skiing thing, which is a lot of fun. Okay, I and bet. And then it kept on for a while. Uh-huh. Now, did, were you uh, were you three event or were you, did you slalom or jump or what was your what was your uh, specialty? Mostly, I was a trick skier, but I did do three event. Got decent at slalom, and I was a terrible jumper, but I could land a jump in college. <laughs> that's all that matters. Something so, I've never done. I've always wanted to do that. That looks so much fun, but I've never I've never gone off a it, ramp. It's worthy of giving it a whirl. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the first time you went off, what what was your like? Were you nervous? Was it excitement? What what is it? The first time you're lining up for the ramp oh it's scary as it can be and when you come off upside down then it's just <laughs> exactly what you expected so it's all right <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome and then you went on to do some show skiing so that uh it did i got a true love for show skiing and then we still continue to do a little bit of that with our family and bring it around so it's bringing up the next generation building pyramids and that's awesome there's a in uh, on our lake, there's a, uh, a show ski team that every Friday night they do their practice round and they open it to the public. So uh, it's something I've really enjoyed seeing, you know, 20, 20 people. And I remember as a kid going to the um, uh, the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. And I don't know, I think it was the Cypress Garden show um, was who ran it. But um, they had a show skiing event there that we went to every year. And it was I loved it. It was fantastic. So I think that's cool. So you, you you still you still can get up on the pyramid? Or are you the base now? You're not climbing up anymore. <laughs> uh, actually, we built a pyramid just last week with some friends that wanted. To Did learn you really? To do it, so we. Oh yeah, it's it's good fun. I think we need to get you on the bottom of one. Uh, you know, that's where I need to be. Is on the bottom. I, I'm good and steady. I'm good and steady. But I don't know that you want 200 <laughs> plus pounds climbing to the top of any pyramid nowadays. So. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you ran the ski school. Was that down there in, in Texas on Lake Conroe? I think. Yes, yes, and that was when we did that. There was just a huge need, and so we would teach people to ski or slalom or um, barefoot, or we would just take their grandkids skiing. And so we were um, kind of a day camp for the the grandkids, and that seemed to work out really well. Yeah, so we did that for about ten years. Okay, okay, just introducing people to the sport and, and getting them more advanced and uh, somebody that really knows what's going on versus dad just trying to yank the kids out of the water. Exactly, yeah, it seemed to work <laughs> better when we did it. Yeah, I, I've got, uh, we're going to uh, my family's lake place coming up uh, at the end of the month, 
And uh, I think my six-year-old is ready to, to try to ski for the first time. And um, so I'm excited to get her out there. And I just need to remember what it was like when dad was trying to teach us kids how to ski and try to make it a little more relaxed and a little more, a little more fun environment. Oh, that's exciting. You'll have yeah, to pictures. I've, well, yeah, there will absolutely be uh, be videos and pictures, and and my guess is it'll make make the uh, newsletter and the and the blog. So I'll, I'll I'll send you some for sure. So that that's awesome. Absolutely. I I knew that you did some of that skiing. I didn't know the the full story, but um, I, I think it's always cool to hear hear people's background. And then you were on the lake that Lakeshore Sports, and they they recruited you. They hired you on. How did that all all come about? Um, well, actually, it was when we were doing the ski school, and it turned out that our ski customers all wanted to buy boats, and the boating, <laughs> the guy that we were working with, his customers all wanted ski lessons, and so we just kind of merged up there together, and one thing led to another, and all of a sudden, I was in the boat business. <laughs> there you go. And, and you mentioned we we always talk um, before we start recording the actual podcast, and Melanie said, I'm not sure what I can, what I can share that's going to be valuable, but... Right there, what you just shared, that the the ski school person, and now it might be a wakeboard instructor in your area, and the dealership, there is a connection there, whether you're using it or not, getting to know that person to help supporting them, because the clients, they're teaching how to, you know, do the water sports, are your potential boat buying clients, and your boat buying clients likely want to know how to how to learn or get better at those events and are those um uh those water sports wakeboarding skiing whatever it is these days um look for opportunities like that how, how did that happen did you get just kind of serendipitously happened or or you you sought each other out you know it was it was odd he was a water skier too and so we just kind of became friends and um Gosh, it was so long ago, I don't even remember how it started. Well, you know, in the years. Yeah, that's the thing is in this business especially, the you know, you start as friends and you know, there's there's opportunities there if you if you just scratch just a, a little bit deeper and um and you're you're on the lookout for them or are aware of them uh, when they come up other than just oh that's cool. You know, you you teach a ski school or oh that's cool, you've got a dealership. Um, I think that's a, a great opportunity. So, did you start right as the as the general manager? Did you start in sales? Where, where did you come into the the business? Uh, we actually started very small, and I was just kind of uh, in sales. But you know, we were a two man show working out of a houseboat down at a marina. Okay. And so then we grew into uh, having the Cobalt Line on Lake Conroe and having a big dealership and. Um, over time, it was just kind of worked into being the general manager, and now we've got you know a sales force of you know four salespeople and um, the whole gamut of of activity going on now. Yeah, yeah. And when you when you discovered me, um, you were already highly successful. I mean, you were um, you were doing real well. You had a, a good a good team there. Um, what made you? Um, kind of seek me out, and, and I, I think you were in that Cobalt 20 group, right? Right, yes. Yep. You were presented at the T- Cobalt 20 group, and it was, um, you know, it was just kind of a light bulb that went off and said, oh, this guy's got good ideas. Let's go, you know, reach <laughs> the benefits of those. Because, you know, you can do the same thing over and over. You just got to do new things to get new ideas. So. Yeah, absolutely. You, you were absolutely. our new idea. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. I, I'm glad that we're talking here. The idea is, uh, you know, sticking and uh, and working out. So, as you as you got those new ideas, what are a couple that I mean? You've been in the business for for 20 years. Have been around boating since you were a kid. Um, what are some of the maybe the ideas, concepts, or even strategies that kind of initially jumped out as you went through the program? And, and we've been talking. That you're like, man, I can't believe that it's such. It makes so much sense. I can't believe we didn't do this before, or, or we thought about it, we just didn't get it done. Well, the first one that, the one that caught my eye, and honestly, the one that was absolutely the most effective was the very first one with the eight word email, and I was just okay. floored at how effective it was. I mean, yeah, a little bit dumbfounded in that it was that easy and that effective. The, the simplicity of it. And I, I wish I could take credit for that, but I I um, learned that one from a, a mentor of mine 
that um, I've been following for uh, probably 10 years or more and uh, just adapted it to the boat business. But and, and there's a reason why I put that one so early in the system is just, you know, get a, a nice, easy win and, and realize that there there can be some super, super simple um, ways to kind of, I don't know, um, bring opportunities back up that maybe got forgotten about, um, you know, based on the way people actually buy boats. You know, they don't, they don't come in and decide, Hey, we're going to, we're going to buy a boat today and it's just done and they buy it. It's a, Hey, maybe we should think about getting into boating in six months, a year, two years down the line. They actually do it. Is that what you found from the results is that some of those people were a little bit older than you thought maybe valuable leads? Oh, absolutely. And the people that I thought had completely changed their mind uh, were interested. So, yep. you know, it was definitely worth the time to uh, connect with them. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Um, and there's, I, I do, one of my uh, Boat Dealer Profits TV videos, I talk about um, uh, the gold mine. And I just see for, for dealer after dealer that I work with and, and talk with that the database of clients, whether it's on a, you know, um, sticky notes and note cards or whether it's uh, you guys, you guys use a CRM uh, contact management system. I think you guys use ADP, the light speed. Uh, actually, uh, we use light speed, but mostly for that, we use wind boats. Okay. Okay. For our, with our contacts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Brian put together a, a great system with that, uh, with that wind boat program. Um, and yeah, just, you know, within that wind boat system, there's just a, a ton of opportunity waiting every season, you know, and, and as you come down to the end, you can probably, Melanie, reuse that strategy again, um, pull that email out for everybody that hasn't bought yet this season. And, but you said when we started that you're, you're starting to sell out of inventory already. We are. We had a really, really good June. And so, you know, we're very low, which is uh, a pleasant problem. <laughs> that, uh, that is always a good thing to be getting ready to start when you go order in your next. Have you guys had the, the Cobalt Dealer meeting yet? Is that? Uh, no, it's actually not until October. And okay. so we've got a little bit of time, but we're still, we're absolutely placing orders right now. Awesome. Awesome. So. What are your what are your thoughts? Just this popped in me as I said, Cobalt. What are your thoughts on the uh, transaction um, getting bought out? Was that a, a surprise um, to you, or is that a good thing? I, w I would imagine. Um, it was a surprise, but okay. I think it's absolutely a good thing. And yeah. I mean, I'm happy for the Cobalt people. I think it's a it was a good matchup for the company. So yeah, we're looking forward to to big things. Yeah, that's awesome. So hopefully. Hopefully you guys are, um, you know, if, if you, uh, as I got sidetracked, which often, <laughs> often happens as I've been doing these interviews, uh, if you break out that uh, that eight-word email again this fall, um, you can position it as, um, you know, hey, are you are you thinking about a boat for next summer? Um, and it may give you an opportunity to get some ordered boats in there early um, and, uh, you know, get get some business coming in as, as the uh, weather starts cooling down here as, as Labor Day is approaching. Um, what else? There was, so that that very first one right out of the gate, um, you had success, and I think that's where your your first sale came from. Was that uh, just that quick and easy email? Right, it was. And in fact, the the people ended up buying. I thought they were interested in a cobalt, and it turned out they ended up buying. Sorry for the little technical glitch there. We um, got disconnected, so Melly and I picked up uh, almost where this question ends, and um, we will splice it right in here for you. Thanks a lot get some ordered boats out of that with the um, um, with that email this fall you, know, you may, maybe want to do it after Labor Day um, could be another another opportunity to, to break that out um, so we'll, we'll jump back in <laughs> um, so was there, was there anything else the the initial uh, the initial quick email um, anything else that because uh, we worked a lot on your messaging as well and, and kind of getting those getting those solidified but what else what else jumped out at you as you were you're going through that's that's been impactful well yeah i think the thing that probably was that we've been focused on the most we worked a lot on the messages and all that but i think that the gist of getting the monthly newsletters out hitting people like with a, a postcard in the mail just putting our name in front of them more often yep um really kind of resonated with me and so we've been trying to do that and we'll continue to do that throughout the year because I think that's important. 
Yeah, that's and one of the and I write about this in my boating industry articles. It's it's um, in my new book, which by the way, thank you for for letting me use your your quote in there. Um, I've got uh, I've got your copy signed and just need to, to dump it in the mail here for you. Um, but uh, the the educational spectrum of the boat buyer when you when you get that concept and you really understand that you know the, the way people actually buy a boat is, you know, it could take them a while. And if you're the one that's staying in contact with the newsletter with fun and interesting information, and I saw your, I think it was your 4th of July newsletter where you were sharing where the fireworks are going to be. And it's just a, you do a great job of making it fun and interesting and not just all about, we've got this boat for sale, we've got that boat for sale. Um, had you been doing that before uh, my program? Um, a little bit, but not as much. Okay. And so we've kind of put a little bit more emphasis on that, and it's it's been good. Yeah, the the consistency of that is is one of the keys um, that they they know month in month out it's going to be there, and, and you almost become you know you think about people actually subscribe to to boating magazines um, and, and pay money to get that information, and, and when you become that local source for boating information. You know what's happening on the lake. I know you guys are are big on events, which is awesome. That I, I that was one of the things when we initially talked that I was impressed on, or impressed about that you guys did was you know throughout the season you're hosting events. And, and by the way, did you ever get the the movie idea going, the the float in movie? <laughs> no, we kind of got overwhelmed with the se- the season, but <laughs> yeah. it's definitely still on our to do list. Okay, so uh, awesome, awesome. It seems like a ton of fun. Yeah, it's um, for just to fill everybody in that's listening. We had um, when I was selling boats, one of the things I started up at our, our dealership was a, um, a kind of a drive-in movie, but we did it on the water. Um, and, and so I, maybe one of our first or second conversations, we got on that topic somehow. And um, I, I think Melanie's got a great spot down there on the water to um, to do a, a float-in movie and just make it a, a fun and interesting event that people are going to get out on their boat and, and uh, use their boat even more. And certainly what we talked about, Melanie, was, you know, how can you not invite a friend out with you if you're going to watch, you know, Jaws on the Water or Finding Nemo or whatever movie it is? Uh, so, yeah, I, I can't wait till you guys are able to do that. But <laughs> a good problem that you're too busy to get that in this season. So um, what, what else? Um, was there anything on the sales side of things? I know you and I did most of the work together, um, but but I also know that you you were you were good about um, you know introducing this information to your salespeople. Was there anything on the sales side that was that was beneficial that you you found um, resonated with with your sales team and, and kind of clicked with them? Well, I think that, you know, I try, I've got an awesome team, and they're always game to try anything. But, you know, I think your coaching calls, you know, your weekly ones that they can listen to on their own, you know, that's always a good thing, too. So they're not, you know, necessarily waiting for me to, you know, provide them with great information. So Yeah, yeah they take the initiative to listen to those calls and like, oh, I can I can easily. And the, the calls she's talking about are just, you know, 10 to 20 minutes, um, one one idea per call. And, um, you know, maybe it's uh, how to present price or, or how to ask for contact information or ask for the sale uh, with a trial close question. Um, so they, they were actually participating in that. And, and um, did you ever hear or use any of the, uh, any of the ideas? Um, the, the how to ask for more money, like presenting it from the MSRP and going down there from that, that probably got the biggest uh, talking, you know, Besides asking for the money, but actually how best to ask for the money, how yep, to present it, yep. that was so the one. Yeah, the idea is you don't just present price as here's the price of the boat. You you do it in a way that you let psychology work for you, and you present it in a specific manner um, with that's kind of, I don't know how to best describe it, delivers more value in the customer's mind. Than if you just spew out a price that um, you know that comes to your head, and you actually have a strategy. D- did you see any impact on your margin this season? And I don't know if you if you've even looked at it because we got started when in February when your boat show was kicking off. Yeah, right. So. Well, in January. Okay, January. 
Yeah, our margins have been very, very good this year, and but we we've made a conscious effort to do the present it from MSRP, and you know it's just people realize the better you are at presenting it, the better they realize what a good deal they're getting, and so yep. you can you know you can hold your margins and not have to give stuff away. So it's it's uh, it's amazing. I've I've talked to a few dealers about sales training over the past couple of weeks, and um, you know it's. The conversation always tends to go to we need them to be better closers so that they can hold margin better. But you know when you when you really understand the psychology of it, the your opening actually has a, a lot more impact on the final number. Now you got to handle the close right for sure, but um, presenting price and and all of that stuff early in the process can tend to have a bigger impact on your actual margins um, when you when you do it the right way anyway. So what, what's what are some of um, um, some of the things that you're like, man, this was difficult. So, you know, I, I appreciated that you guys had a great experience and you had some great things to say. Was there anything in the um, that you're like, man, I would love to see that adjusted or, or change or any areas that you had some issues with? Um, well, I, I have issues with, you know, um, Managing my inventory levels, <laughs> but okay. I think that was just because we had such a good year. Yeah. And so, you know, that was hard. And honestly, having time to um, to do things like like the movie night, for example, because that was something we really wanted to do. You know, that's been very hard. And doing, you know, you talked about doing the videos. Um, yeah. We really want to do that, and that's just been a, a little difficult because, you know, getting the right tools and just finding the time. That, yeah. That's been yeah. it yeah. as much as anything because we've got the, you know, you've given us great tools on how to do it, just making it happen. Yeah, here's what I'll tell you is um, you got started, I mean, you got started the week of your boat show or like the week before or after your boat show, I don't remember exactly. So here's mm-hmm. the here's the great thing, Melanie, is, is you jumped out and you got to work right away, um, which tells me that as you get past Labor Day and, and you get past all your winterizations and annual services um, and you actually have a little bit of time to breathe, um, you and I can get on the phone again and, and tackle some of that stuff and get it in place in the off season, so that next year as January, February rolls around, you've already got some of the guts of it in place, that foundation in place. So um, don't hesitate to reach out to me and, and um, and let's work on some of that stuff so that um, that next year it's already it's already together. When okay, we want to do a movie night. We've got all the stuff prepared. We know how we're going to do it. We've tested it, and you're you know you're ready to go in um, you know May, June, July, whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, any, yeah, yeah, and and actually reach out to me on that. Um, that's that's uh, one of the things I love to do is once. Once a dealer kind of understands the way I think um, and understands some of the main concepts, which you definitely do, I, I think you got most of them before we even started working together. They, you know, you you had that same mentality of you can't be a price seller. You know, if you want to be long term and provide great service, you have to have quality service and great people. Um, so we connected on that, but yeah. working after the fact and working together even more to me is more fun because then it's just, you know, two people brainstorming and, and coming up with even better ways to, uh, to make their dealership more profitable. Any other, any other um, ideas or suggestions that, um, that you would want to share for, for people that maybe haven't heard of me or, or, you know, maybe haven't seen my articles or read any of my books or stuff that uh, you're like, you got to check this concept out. This is something that you need to think about. <laughs> Well, I definitely think they should, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed working with you. But, you know, I thought your books were excellent, too. I've, you know, read through them and good ideas in there. And I think that they're so practically written that people will understand that it's it's not just, oh, somebody just writing an article. It's somebody's actually been there, you know, saying, okay, this is really this really works. Yep. And um, it's, you know, if they can look up a book, look up, you know, your um information online it it's absolutely worth the time so and the fact well, that it was you know we didn't have to pay you till we sold something so that was yeah. great <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was uh that, that's a good way to do it, it you know make it as uh just as i i try to think about the psychology 
of um, what the boat buyers are doing, I'm always thinking about, okay, how can I make this so a dealer is going to have a hard time saying no uh, to the offer, whether it's a guarantee or that, that special promotion I was running with you guys that uh, was was super easy. And just always thinking and testing and, and doing new things, um, whether it's with my clients or, or for my own personal business, you know, making it, uh, making it work even better. Um, well, hey, Melanie, I, I appreciate um, I appreciate you coming on. I know you weren't really sure what to expect uh, <laughs> doing the podcast, but as mm-hmm. always, you're willing to jump right in and and uh, and figure it out, uh, which is is another thing that I appreciate about uh, about working with you. Um, so, any any last famous last words? Anything that uh, that you'd want to share? I, I think you've you've given a lot of, of great concepts and ideas. Um, you know, from somebody that's in the mix, you know, you, what'd you say? You have four salespeople? I do. I do. Four salespeople and, um, you know, running a, a highly successful in a 20 group, um, carrying, um, carrying some, say, premium level, uh, brands, uh, with Cobalt. Who, who's your pontoon line? Uh, South Bay. South Bay. Okay. You know, and just mm-hmm. working with, um, with clientele that, that um has high expectations or invest in a significant amount of money in the in the boating lifestyle that they choose and um and so I, I think that's that's awesome that you were you were open to to sharing all that. Um so I appreciate it and um definitely hit me up when you're ready for your next coaching call, okay? I will do, absolutely. All right. Thanks, Thanks so much, Melanie. Man. So I want to thank uh, Melanie for being such an amazing guest and um, agreed to join me. She shared a lot of great information. One of the things I absolutely love about Melanie is she is going to get stuff done. She does not mess around. If she sees a good idea, she acts on it. Uh, there's no getting on the next coaching call and saying, oh, you know, I didn't have time or something else came up. It's That's a great idea, and she gets it done. It's just, and she, she holds her staff accountable. She holds the people in the dealership accountable, and, and that's you know a big part of their success. Uh, my strategies and tactics that uh, she was able to implement, um, the only reason they were effective is because she implemented them and she got it done. That's, uh, so if, um, if you're interested in, um, in getting involved in the Splash system, uh, would love to have you uh, have you apply. There's a, a couple simple things that you can do um, to uh, to get involved. The first is you can apply to um, to join the Splash system. It, it's real simple. Just go to BoatDealerProfits.com forward slash Splash apply. Um, if you want to um, check out to see, hey, what opportunities do you have in your boat dealership? Uh, you can go to my uh, Profit Enhancer Scorecard. It's BoatDealerProfits.com slash scorecard. And um, that's a great way to see where the opportunities are for you in your boat business um, based on uh, your personal evaluation of the business. And it's e- even if nothing else, it just gives you a lot of insight into um, your strengths and weaknesses and, and where you can, uh, can focus for the, the biggest bang for the buck. Um, I always have um, I always have uh, opportunities for a new program starting. So if you want to know when the next uh, program starts, you can email me Matt at BoatDealerProfits.com. Uh, just put your uh, your name, your title, and your uh, phone number in there, and uh, my assistant will will set up that call, and we can talk about opportunities. If you're a manufacturer, a, a dealership owner, um, and uh, you're looking for some training. Um, I've been doing a lot of sales training lately, and um, and uh, that is something that is really enjoyable and, and really is a big needle mover, especially for the people that put it together with the splash system and uh, and do both. And typically, the uh, the ones that do the splash system typically will will bring me in for sales training at some point uh, after they complete the uh, the splash system, just because it it uh, is such a good fit. And um, and the the success with the splash systems leads very nicely into that. So those are a couple great ways to um, to get involved. You can always check out additional episodes of the podcast. Um, you can check out my uh, Boat Dealer Profits TV. That's at boatdealerprofits.com/tv. Uh, my boating industry articles. You can check that out. Um, virtually every uh, issue. Uh, the uh, the data issues they they don't have me right and you can check out uh, all of my other articles and blog posts at boatdealerprofits.com that's all there 
And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the splash system, aren't quite ready to apply or talk to me, you can check out um, one of the many webinars uh, that I offer. Just a lot of great content, gives you a little bit more insight into the splash system after you've read my book, uh, BoatDealerProfits.com slash webinar. And uh, you can check that out there. So I appreciate you joining me. I look forward to seeing you on the next podcast. And until then, um, I hope you're having an enormous selling season. Take care, everybody.